Hey guys, I, I've actually seen some of the Albin Merrill's videos and some of the people that watch them too has asked how to make this same effect. So today I'm gonna explain it. Now, here's the scene I made and this is the way it's animated. And we're actually gonna go and deconstruct this to achieve the same effect at a plane. Scale it down to have a realistic scale of the world. We wanna make it smaller, like way smaller. And we're gonna apply the scale. Now, particle properties, create a new one and change this to hair. Click advanced. And the number, we're gonna just use 500 for this tutorial, seven segments of the hair. The hair length is right now four meters long. We want it to be 10 centimeters tall or maybe less, five centimeters tall. Check the hair dynamics. On the hair dynamics is where all the simulation is going to happen. And if you click play, nothing's gonna happen because first we have to add a field. On the force fields tab, click a force. Bring it up a little bit. Let's make this force a little bit smaller. Here on the empty size, nine centimeters or 10 and bring it down again. Now, if we hit play, everything is gonna fall as intended. And that's cause the force is pushing the hairs downwards. We're gonna go again to the physics tab. I mean the, the children tab and hit interpolate it. If you hit this right here, there's just 500 hairs. If we hit interpolate it, and actually 100 is too much. If we hit the display amount on 100, it's just gonna look odd. We want 20 and the render model is gonna be the same. Let's go to the viewport display and don't show the emitter and the strand steps are going to be four. And on the render, don't show emitter either. So the only thing that's on the screen is the hairs. We actually don't want this simulation to just drop all the hairs like that. We want them to be on the center, like it will have a fall off and that's actually what we're gonna add. Select the field right here and go to the particles or the field um, options and click here on the max distance and just bring it up a bit. You'll see a dotted line and that dotted line is gonna be the limit for the fall off of your field. So if we hit play, that's gonna be a limit and we're gonna animate the, the field. On the frame number one is going to be one Shit, it's not. On the frame 20, it's going to be zero. Now that we actually have the, um, the bake done, we hit play, it's gonna play real time. And you'll see it's it's way faster than we intend to be. So let's go to here on the output properties, the time remapping and set it to 75 on all. And that's gonna make it a little bit slower. I'm gonna keep the 75 so it it's slow, but not that much. So we're going to go right straight to the shading part. And let's go to EV, EV settings, hit bloom, ambient occlusion, motion blur, all of those shit, hit refraction, and we're done. Hit here on the viewport tab, shading, uh, scene lights and scene world, and go to the world tab and put it like a bit, just a bit. Of light and we're gonna create a few point lights right now you're just seeing like a path the strands are not strands of hair you're gonna go to EV settings here strip and it's gonna give you an oddly looking shape but the way to like control that is go to the particle settings again and right here on the hair shape we can control that so we can actually control the diameter root and make it a little bit smaller and close the tip. We want to uncheck that. And the tip is going to be the same 0.4. This is going to be 0.4 or just bring it down until you want it. Yeah, there it is. We're going to go to the shading part and create a new material. This new material is going to be here. And the way you can control the, the color ramp on the hairs is let's create a color ramp connected to the base color or just leave it there. Hit Control Shift click to see it with the viewer. You have to have uh, Note Wrangler enabled. 
this one, enable it. Now we hit Shift A and search for hair info, and it's gonna give you some info about the about the hair. Select intercept and connect it to the factor, and that way we can manage the hair vertically. Uh, I'm gonna keep the the top or the the tip of the hair is going to be the part that's going to be lit it. So I'll just leave it there and connect this to the surface again. And this is going to be the driver to our other material. The strand can be just a simple black or gray color, so it's just shiny. And let's add a little bit of transmission. Now we're going to create a new shader, which is called emission. And create a mix shader. Mix shader, connect this to the bottom, this one to the top, and connect this to the surface. Now, this is just going to lit everything up because this is the emission. But if we connect the color ramp and make it drive the mix shader, it's going to be just on the tips. White is the bottom one, black is the top one. And that's the way we get these tips uh, lit up. The way to get the color is right here, there's a color and you can actually play with the color, but everything is going to be the same color. And we're going to create a new color ramp. And that color ramp is going to drive the color. We can change this color to whatever we want. Um, I just want a like a greenish color. And this one, I actually want it to be a green, green, green color. And this one's going to be a blue color. And it's going to be all lit up the same way. But right here on the hair info, there is a random. And each hair is going to have a random number. And if we connect it, it's going to be randomized. And that's the way we have hair is randomized. If we move this here, we're going to have more green. If we move this, eh, we're going to have that. Now, we only have green and blue colors. We want a little bit more colors. So change this to HSV and make it clockwise. This way, you can actually create a range of colors. And that's the way we achieve the, um, the litting up strands. We actually are finished with the with the part of Albi Merrill. Just add a camera. Just hit Control Alt Zero on your numpad, and it's gonna align with your view. Click it, and at the depth of field, add an empty. This empty is going to be the object we want the depth of field to focus on. Empty, and this way we actually gonna achieve that cinematic look Albin has. The camera, I always want the lens to be like 70 milliliters, f-stop 3.1. You can actually put a little bit more, like 6.6, 5.6 I mean. And there you go. There you have it. You have the effect. There it is. But if you want to check this same effect, you'll see that the, the hairs actually light up like on a shockwave motion. And the way to achieve that is everything's going to be set up the same, right? But here, the strength is actually driven by two color ramps. This one is the first color ramp, which is the one that expands, right? And the, the bottom one is the one that erases the the other one and that's the way we achieve the the cold the um, shock wave I'll, I'll explain you if you want it on a later tutorial but for this we're done actually we're not done <laughs> we I, I told you we could just play with the the hair strands in order to make them look like a little bit realistic go to the hair settings and here in parting clumping and roughness there's a lot of settings you can play with Mm, if we actually hit the, the lens, it's going to make the, the, the hairs longer. If we move the threshold, there's going to be longer hairs or in smaller hairs like this. There's going to be some hairs which are taller, which I actually like. On the clumping, you can play with it too to make it a little bit more random. The roughness, you can play with it and you can animate all this stuff with keyframes so you can make stuff like this. But yeah, so there's the tutorial, guys.
And if you actually liked it, please subscribe. There is more coming. I haven't had that much time. But yeah, see ya.